Hello everyone, I welcome you all in this session. Dear students, in previous topic, we had discussed about the history of travelers. Today, we will continue this topic, but we will discuss about the great traveler Ibn Battuta. As far as the Ibn Battuta is concerned, he is considered as a scholar, a historian and a traveler. Ibn Battuta was fond of traveling. He traveled during his lifetime, he traveled number of countries to think about the history of world. In India, Ibn Battuta came with Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was the warrior, conqueror and great ruler of his time. Ibn Battuta was appointed in 1333. He was appointed as the Qazi, the Qazi of court of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. And he remained for this post, he remained up to 1341. After that, Ibn Battuta reached Morocco. When he reached Morocco, he was warmly welcomed by the Sultan of Morocco, Abu Inan. After that, Abu Inan ordered him to write the travels. And for the writing of travelers, Abu Ibn Juzay was appointed for his help to write his travel. The book was written by Ibn Battuta during 1354 to 1355. This book was written in Arabic. It was a valuable source to know about the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, his rule in India. This book is considered as a valuable source to know about the medieval India and the condition of people in India. Ibn Battuta wrote all those things in his book Rila. The name of the book was Rila. Rila was an account maintained by Ibn Battuta. In his account, he mentioned all those things which were unfamiliar for people of Central Asia. So Ibn Battuta described everything uh, in a good way to understand the society of India or to understand the culture of this part of world. First of all, he wrote about, he described about coconut and pan. He said that, that with this, I want to familiarize the people of Central Asia that in India, there was a tall tree who was named as coconut tree. About Pan, Ibn Battuta stated that Pan was one of the important thing that was used in India. Every rich family used to possess pan. While offering pan, it was possessed, it was brought uh, in silver vessels as well as in gold vessels to the guests. Ibn Battuta also mentioned about the cities of India. In the 14th century, India, Indian people, most of the Indian people were living in cities. City life was considered important as, as far as the economic and other social activities are concerned. Ibn Battuta mentioned that 
Indian steeds were large, wide, and prosperous. The people who lived in cities were merchants, laborers, skilled persons. And Ibn Battuta mentioned that it was not possible for everyone to live in cities because it was possible for only those who possessed labors, who possessed resources, who possessed skill to live in cities. One of the city that had mentioned by Ibn Battuta in his account Rila was about the city of Delhi. Dear students, the city of Delhi was very large. It was very wide. And Ibn Battuta mentioned that the city of Delhi was divided into two parts. The upper part and the lower part. In upper part, it was very crowded part of the city. People used to move, were engaged in their own daily routines. The lower part of the city was considered as a granary, a storehouse where the production, where the secular artists prepared, manufactured their products and were used to sold their production in the lower part of the city. Ibn Battuta also mentioned about the markets of Indian societies. Ibn Battuta mentioned that there was a market, a specific market was present in India was the market of singers, the market of dancers and the market of musicians. That market was called Tara Abad. Tara Abad was a special market where every musician used to sit, where every musician and dancer used to enjoy, to provide the enjoyment for the crowd. Dear students, further in his accounts mentioned as Rila was written in Arabic, Ibn Battuta mentioned about the slavery. During 14th century, Ibn Battuta described that there was a large population who were concerned as slaves. As far as the slaves are concerned, it was a group of class who were treated badly. Ibn Battuta described that there were two types of slaves were prevalent in Indian society. The first class of the slave were generally those who were imprisoned during the time of war. And the second class of slaves were those, were those children, were those girls, were those women who were thrown out by their family, by the parents because of the poverty. Ibn Battuta stated that I myself had purchased 200 slaves, camels, elephants and I have presented them to the king Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Ibn Battuta also stated that Muhammad bin Tughlaq offered 200 slaves to his teacher, to his religious teacher Nasiruddin in order to pay respect, in order to pay homage to his teacher. So dear students, this was about the Rahila, this was about the description a valuable, a historical account maintained 
by Ibn Battuta living in India. And when he reached Morocco, he wrote the account in the name of Rihla. My dear students, as far as Rihla is concerned, as far as the history of the world is concerned, it is considered very valuable account. My dear students, Ibn Battuta also threw light on the postal system of India. He threw light, he detailed, he gave, he gave us a description, a detailed description about the postal system of that time. Ibn Battuta stated that the postal system of India at the 14th century was amazing, was tremendous, was developed in a good way. There were the two postal systems were horse posts and food posts. Both of the systems worked for the development, for the political development and for the equality for the society. Ibn Battuta stated that both uh, postal systems were tremendous, had uh, uh, improved, had improved, had promoted the sovereignty of the state because these postal systems were used in order to maintain law and order. Because of these postal systems, the king used to get information, valuable information about the state, about his administration, about the officials, their work, their activities. Ibn Battuta mentioned that the postal system of Muhammad bin Tughlaq was best in the subcontinent. My dear students, this was about Ibn Battuta. Now we will discuss about another important, valuable, famous traveler who traveled India during the 17th century. A great traveler, a great philosopher, a great doctor, a great politician, a great historian was named as Francio Berner belonged to France. He came from France. He came to India during 1656 AD to 1668. During the time of Francio Berner, India was ruled by the Mughal dynasty. The Mughal ruler, the Mughal Sultan who ruled during the time of Francio Berner was the great Aurangzeb. Francio Berner discussed, he detailed, he made an account. The title of his account was Travel in the Mughal Empire. That is the book. That is an historical account, my dear students. That was written by, that was maintained by Francio Berner. Travel in the Mughal Empire. First of all, he stated that about the land ownership. What was land ownership? According to the Francio Berner, Francio Berner stated that during the time of Mughal rule in India, the Indian peasants, the Indian farmers lived a miserable life. Francio Berner threw a light on the systems, the conditions, that were prevailed during the 17th century in India. He stated about the land ownership. He said that the whole land was controlled by king. 
why were the indian farmers and peasants lived a pitiable life why there was a starvation why the peasants lived hand to mouth he gave a description that the only reason behind the sufferings behind the sorrow of the peasants lived in the 17th century in india was that the land was controlled by the city the owner of the land was king and the king used to distribute his land among his companions among the nobles whenever king was happy he used to distribute his jagirs happily among his nobles whenever he was uh, offended when there was a kind of a grief when he was annoyed he used to snatch away the land from nobles and the rest of the society rest of the classes in the indian society were without land that brought an impoverishment that brought misery majority of the population were without land and a minority like rulers like nobles right the relatives of the ruler were having huge estates lived a splendid life that was the reason that was the main reason behind the poverty and the misery of indian farmers during 17th century my dear students francio berner also gave us information about the imperial karkhanas imperial karkhanas were those karkhanas which were controlled by the imperial rulers by the imperial officials these karkhanas were generally existed in cities in these karkhanas the common man was working in these karkhanas there were number of halls and in these halls the skilled artists gold smiths iron smiths carpenters shoe makers used to perform their activities but they were sad a they were sad francis of bernier expressed his grief in his book said that despite being the skilled artists were lived a miserable life they were not treated properly they used to work throughout the day and during the evening they used to move towards their home but at the end they get nothing they were without clothes they were without essential amenities so that this was the main reason behind that the production that was produced they used to manufacture minimum things and it jolted it gave a serious blow to the production industry and the economy of the state further my dear students francio berner also stated in his book travelers in the mughal empire he said about the towns of india during the 17th century francisco berner said that 15% population in the 17th century living in towns he compared the percentage with the european urban population and he described that it was more than european urbanization but he explained that 
the stays were not properly maintained there was the lack of essential requirements everywhere in the cities and the city was controlled by big merchants masoli patnam agra kashmir sind were some famous cities in the 17th century in india those who used to control the cities those who used to maintain ownership over the business over the trade they are called states they had their own organizations generally the organizations were called mahajans like a guild like a federation we can say my dear students and all affairs of the state as far as the business as far as the transaction as far as the economic activity or concern was controlled by mahajan by a state and nothing was given to a common labor nothing was given to a worker a single person further my dear students francis of bernier explained that there was a inhuman practice that was prevalent in indian society that was named as sati system francisco bernard explained the misery the sorrow the exploitation faced by a woman in india who was called sati whenever a woman whenever his husband died francisco bernard explained an incident that i was a eyewitness at when in my in my own eyes before my eyes in front of me a 12 year widow was brought because his husband died it was an inhuman practice it was a fake less custom prevalent in indian society as far as the hindu society was concerned and he was brought before the funeral prayer of his husband and she was thrown on to the funeral prayer and was considered a sati woman at the end my dear students francis so bernal explained that indian society in the 17th century was not a good society he compared the indian society with the french society he tried to dominate the european society he said that indian society was not good in any respect neither in education development nor in economic prospect you can say my dear students he compelled his book was translated he was welcomed by the louis 16 the emperor of france when he reached to his homeland and further the book was translated into number of languages he warned all those rulers of europe who believe in private who believe in state honor of land with his book he tried to understand he tried to want to the aware the rulers of europe that if you will do the same in your own country you will get destruction everywhere this is all for today we'll meet next time till then take care of yourself bye bye